When it comes to the tribulation that will come upon the world during the reign of the Antichrist here on earth, many Christians immediately think about the rapture. The rapture is an apocalyptic event in which Jesus Christ gathers his church. This generates a great debate within Christianity, not about the rapture itself, but about when it will happen. Some scholars believe that the rapture will occur before the period of tribulation. Others believe it will happen in the middle of that period, after three and a half years. And the third group believes that Christians will endure everything that will happen during the seven-year rule of the Antichrist on earth. The truth is that many people don't know much about the rapture and end up creating confusion about the events of the end times. Therefore, in this video, I will present the different views regarding the rapture of the church, and in the end, I will share my opinion on this matter, all right? But before we begin, I would like to ask you to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and activate the notification bell to receive updates from YouTube. Whenever I post a new video, I have been sharing videos with prayers, messages of faith, everything to help you in your journey with God. So come walk with me every day, all right? Let's get started. The first view is the pre-tribulationist view. This line of thought believes that the Church of Christ will be raptured before the Great Tribulation. For this group of Christians, as soon as the Antichrist promotes a great peace agreement among the three major religions of the world and becomes the most popular man on the planet, all those who have surrendered their lives to Christ and recognized Him as Lord and Savior will be suddenly caught up to heaven and spared from the suffering that will come. There are several Bible passages that, according to this group of people, point to this type of rapture. One of the strongest arguments is that while chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the book of Revelation mention the Church of Christ 19 times, from chapter 4 to 19, it does not speak about it but focuses on the tribulation that will be happening on earth. Additionally, the promise Jesus made to the Church of Philadelphia is also one of the foundations of this thinking. Read with me what is written in chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Notice that Jesus said, I will keep you from the hour of trial, and not in the hour, meaning during the tribulation. The Apostle Paul also has teachings that point to this rapture before the great tribulation. He mentions it at least twice in his first letter to the Thessalonians. The first time is in chapter 1, verse 10, and the second time in chapter 5, verse 9. On both occasions, the apostle states that Jesus will deliver us from the wrath to come, for he does not want us to go through that difficult time but to be saved. The apostle Peter also showed that God will deliver his people from this time of judgment, just as he saved Noah from the flood and Lot from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's see what he said. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes, and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. Another crucial belief held by pre-tribulationists is that the Israelites are not part of the Church of Christ since they do not recognize him as the Son of God. Therefore, they will go through the Great Tribulation. Those who remain faithful to God and surrender themselves to Jesus will face persecution, but will be saved when Christ returns with his church. Let's see what the prophet Zechariah said will happen. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on a day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. Look at this, brothers and sisters. If all the saints, that is the Christians, come with Jesus to save Israel and defeat evil, it means that the church will have already been raptured beforehand. 
The second view is the mid-tribulationist view. The mid-tribulationists hold the belief that the church will go through the entire seven-year tribulation, including the first half. The main argument is that the church needs to be tested and go through adversities to demonstrate its faithfulness to God. This view finds biblical basis in different passages that speak of the church enduring the tribulation alongside other end-time events. Just as the apostles of the past suffered severe persecution and did not deny their faith, mid-tribulationists rely on two main biblical passages. The first is found in Matthew chapter 24, which says, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. When the mid-tribulationists cite this biblical passage, they understand it as the church being persecuted by the Antichrist. However, we should understand that the chapter in Matthew 24, which refers to the Great Tribulation, primarily applies to the Jews and not the church. The second biblical passage on which they base their belief is found in Revelation 11, verses 11 and 12, which speak about the two witnesses. Let's read it. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. At that very hour there was a severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. This chapter of Revelation 11 speaks about the two witnesses who appear during the first half of the tribulation and prophesy for three and a half years. Afterward, they will be killed, resurrected, and ascend to heaven, as we just read for the mid-tribulationists. It is at this moment that the church will be raptured. However, this passage clearly shows that only the two witnesses will be raptured. The third vision is the post-tribulationist view. The main idea of this perspective is that the Church of Christ will not be raptured before or during the period of the Great Tribulation, but will endure all the sufferings foretold in the Bible during the seven years leading up to the return of Jesus and the final judgment. These individuals also believe that, no matter how difficult it may be, True Christians will endure all the pain during this time, thanks to the power and mercy of God. They argue that the rapture will occur at the end or near the end of the Great Tribulation. The Church will meet Christ in the air and then return to earth for the beginning of Christ's reign. In other words, the rapture is the second coming of Jesus to establish His kingdom. These events will happen almost simultaneously. Post-tribulationists believe that the Great Tribulation is not only about God's wrath against sinners, but also about Satan's wrath against the saints, who are the Church of Christ. Let's read a passage from Revelation 13, often used as an argument for post-tribulationism. The Bible says, Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Another argument from the post-tribulationists is that Jesus, when he spoke about the end times, said he would return after a great tribulation. In the book of Revelation, with all its prophecies, it only mentions one coming of the Lord, and that occurs after the tribulation. Furthermore, the resurrection of the dead, in Revelation 20, 5 is referred to as the first resurrection. Therefore, they assert that since this first resurrection takes place after the tribulation, the resurrection associated with the rapture, mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, cannot occur until then. So, to conclude, if you have been waiting to hear my opinion on the rapture of the church, I will tell you. I believe that we Christians who love Jesus and serve Him wholeheartedly will be taken to heaven when the Antichrist is revealed, before the tribulation begins, I believe that we will not go through those seven years here on earth because the Bible says that those in Christ are not under condemnation and will never experience the wrath of God. 
but instead will be in glory with our Lord and Savior, who gave his own life on the cross to set us free and save us. But I respect the other two viewpoints and believe that the focus of a Christian should be to preach the gospel, be concerned about their own salvation, and not engage in disputes or create divisions. The Bible says that the return of Jesus will be with power and great glory. We know that during his first coming, Jesus came in humility, was rejected, and despised by men. But one day, he will return as the King of kings and Lord of lords. On that day, the whole world will see and know who Jesus truly is. Amen. Therefore, regardless of whether the rapture occurs before, during, or after the Great Tribulation, we should always be prepared every day until the moment when we will be taken to heaven, where we will live alongside the Father for all eternity. Amen. If you liked this message, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you.